What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for another player ratings. Got Joe with me yet again for the player ratings. How are you doing? Good man. So buzzing off that win still right. from yesterday. Absolutely sensational. We won 3-2 at Villa Park. A last minute, last second <laughs> winner from Hyunmin Son. Um, it's a game that just took your breath away. It was just non-stop from the start to the end, really. Um, I thought Villa pumped us for the first 15 minutes, but apart after that, I thought we got back into the game. I thought we were the better side from about half an hour in to the end, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. I think it's one of those. Mourinho said we deserve to win, but Villa didn't deserve to lose. They had their fair share of possession and play throughout the game, but overall, I think the amount of chances we had, we deserved the game. Mm. So. And let's start off with Hugo Lloris. We gave him yeah. a six. Um, I thought that he could have potentially done better with both goals, but apart from that, I think I think he did all right. Some nice saves in there. Um, some nice coming from corners, punching out crosses and stuff like that. Um, all in all, I thought it was okay display from Hugo. Yeah, I think the first goal, it was a tricky one because he didn't know whether he wanted to come out and sort of get the ball and you know claim it and then in the end he came out a little bit and then came back and that's not what you got to yeah. do you got to be stubborn with your choices and once you hesitant, come out you come out and yeah he was, he was hesitant and that sort of was led to the first goal so and and the second goal I felt that he just stayed on his line a bit too much you mm -hmm. know waiting for the for the shot to come in and then obviously Engels towered above Toby Alderweireld exactly um, and then he was just stood in his spot and he couldn't move. Yeah, you know, his, so. his decision making wasn't great yesterday, so I think six is is a fair fair rating. All right, moving on to Serge Aurier, we gave him a five. Me and you had a bit of uh, disagreement about yeah. this one. Yeah, so I saw there was a chance where he made some a nice run, and of course there was a few chances he created, decent anyway. But overall, I think yeah, I was I was said about a six, but I think five is fair enough as well. He he almost gave away a, a penalty, I believe. Or a chance outside the box, and uh, it wasn't his best game, so I think it's fair. Yeah, I mean, I thought he got up well, um, providing yeah. some good outlet on the attack. Put probably about one good cross in all all afternoon. Yeah. Um, some good energy on the right hand side, but defensively he was getting done time and time again from Jack Grealish, yeah. and also uh, just a bit reckless at times. But attacking wise, he was getting up there well, but he failed to get back. So, mm -hmm. so that's yeah, the problem. I could agree on that. Yeah. All right, moving on to Toby Alvaro. We gave him a six. Um, a very, very up and down came from Toby <laughs> Alvaro. Obviously, scoring the own goal mm. in the first few minutes, then getting us back in the game. Yeah. Um, what do you make out of it, this? It's a game he's not going to forget soon. That's for sure. I mean, the first goal. It's one of those where you've got to be. You've got to make your decision. You either boot the ball out or you don't. You can't sort of half half kick it and not sure what you're going to do with it. It sort of got away with him. But if he would have made his mind up and cleared the ball as soon as he saw it, then it, it wouldn't have led to the goal. And I think it's disappointing. The first goal. I was. Do, you, do you think the wind has has a part to play in that? I feel it, it has been very windy, but I feel like that's that's just an excuse. And I don't I don't like to blame the wind and things like that. I feel like. He should have known. He should have known when the ball was coming in to just clear it out for me personally. For me, I was obviously I was there. I was right on yeah. the sideline, and you could see the ball swaying from side yeah. to side a bit. Um, for me, the the wind did have a lot to do with that goal. But obviously, Fair like enough. you say, Toby Alderweireld should be doing better. Exactly. Um, and then the second um, Aston Villa goal. Engels just completely does Toby Alderweireld in yeah. the air, and Toby's got to be stronger than that. He's got to be stronger than that. Yeah, hundred percent. He he showed. He, he wasn't fully on. I don't know what it was, but he wasn't fully on because... Well, he just had a baby this week and, you know... <laughs> I know, a lot, yeah. A lot of things going on in his life, but... Yeah, yeah, he, well, he seemed on for his, uh, his goal, yeah. but <laughs> when, when he came into the box, he just wasn't switched on, didn't see the play, and... And it was disappointing a, a lot of a lot of the first um, well his whole performance really. Yeah, and I felt that Jack Grealish was turning Toby inside out again. He he was absolutely untouchable, Jack yeah. Grealish. I thought he was sensational. Definitely him and him and Pepper Aaron, If it wasn't for them two, it could have been about six two. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I think. Um, and then obviously his goal, he took it like yeah, a striker. He, like he an was absolute striker. He was really good. I, I was impressed with I was impressed with him. All right, moving on to Davids and Sanchez. We gave him a seven. I thought out of the two centre-back pairings of him and San of him and Toby, I thought he was the better on the day. I felt that he made a lot of good last-ditch challenges, um, getting the ball away most of the time. Uh, but then obviously he did nearly score an own goal, didn't he? Yeah, it was um, it was close. It was sort of similar to Alderweireld's first when the ball's coming across the back line, but he managed to clear it a bit. It got a bit better of a touch on it, and uh, I think. 
yeah, overall, he, he had some more clearances and he was more switched on than Toby, and, and that's why I think his, his rating should have been a seven, yeah. Yeah, all right, moving on to Ben Davis. We gave mm -hmm. him a six. First game back for a long, long time, so you've got to give him a bit of leeway for that. I thought yeah. it was a competent display from Ben Davis. I felt yeah. that he could have done better a bit for the first goal, was um, mm -hmm. a bit out of position, but apart from that, I felt that it was it was a competent display from Ben Davis. Nothing yeah. too great, nothing too poor. That is Ben Davis. Yeah. Yeah. He's, He's the most confident, confident player, seven out of 10 every game. Like he does some good stuff, but then he lets you. Well, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, like he just does some good stuff and then lets the team down on other occasions. But yeah, he never stands out for me. But also, it's good to have him back. I've got to say, so, yeah, it is good to have him yeah. back. Um, moving on to Eric Dyer, we gave him a five. I felt that in the first twenty minutes, first half an hour, he was getting really overrun, a lot of misplaced passes. But to be fair to him, I did think he grew into the game. Obviously, he got taken off after sixty minutes, and we we very much improved after that when he went off. Um, but Eric Dyer. Yeah, first half an hour poor, but I thought he grew into the game. Yeah, I'd agree with that. He 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 looked like he was really struggling, couldn't read the play well the first half an hour. And I think, he, to be fair, in my opinion, I think he was just a filler player. If we didn't have two big games coming up this week, I don't think he'd be in the squad anyway. So it was just, we had to rest of the players. He had to come in and, and it showed he shouldn't really be in the first team. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Moving on to Harry Winks, we gave him a seven. Another another good display from Harry Winks. I feel that he's putting in these displays now week in, week out, which we love to see. Mm -hmm. uh, I, for one, was one that was putting down Harry Winks uh, at the beginning of the season and moving on like just before Jose Mourinho took over. I think that he wasn't putting a shift in, but now I think the last three or four games, he is really, really coming to the fore. Um, he's in that defensive role in midfield, which I really think he's suited to now. I think that you could see his energy in the middle of the park, winning back the balls, uh, spraying the passes. Um, Harry Winks, he's getting better this season. Yeah, it's good, it's good to see him back doing what he does best, winning yeah. balls back, playing well in the central. A bit defensive, yeah, it was good to see him back, to be fair. Moving on to Delhi Ali, we gave him a six. Now, this is really one we disagreed on, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, I felt that Delhi, he got in great positions. Obviously, yeah. he didn't have his shooting boots on because he should have scored about a hat-trick or f even four goals. Yeah. Uh, he had a lot of chances to score, a lot of easy chances to score, but he was doing good work for the team. I felt that he was winning the ball high up the pitch. He was providing a good energy in the middle of the park. And... Um, and yeah, I thought it was it was better from Deli Ali. I know he didn't put the ball away, yeah. but his all round gameplay, I thought it was good. Yeah, no, no, I, th I think I agree with the part when you're saying he won he won possession well and he, he got himself into some really good positions, definitely. But it's just a month ago he would have scored about three of those chances. Yeah. He kept going on his outside of the boot, like trying skip, like trickery, lots of trickery, and, and he do he often pulls it off. But yesterday it just wasn't coming off for him, and I thought. It frustrated me because it was time and time again where he had the chance and fair play for getting into the box and getting the opportunity to shoot, but I don't think um, he had a shooting boot on really. So. That's the problem. I feel that if he was clinical yesterday, you're talking about a nine, a nine or a 10 out of 10, literally. 100%, yeah. Uh, but just because he misses his chances, everyone goes, oh, Ali was crap, Ali was this, yeah. Ali was that. But I felt that like he was getting into the positions, he was yeah. winning the ball high up the pitch, he was providing like good energy for us throughout the team. So I think that everyone putting him down a bit is a bit unjust. I think it's because he set himself the bar so high so that when he does what he's supposed to do and gets himself into the box but then doesn't score, because he's already set the bar so high, people already sort of say, oh, he could do better and stuff like that. So. It's, it's a good argument, but I 100% I understand both, to, both sides. To be fair to the people that are putting down, he did lose the ball a lot in possession, yeah. but he was doing the work winning the possession. So, you know, which were, it's hard. It's yeah, hard yeah, one. Yeah. Obviously, we're only giving a six, so I didn't think he played like that well. Yeah. But I don't think people were telling me, oh, you've got to give him a three, you've got to give him a four. Oh, no, no, was it, wasn't, it wasn't awful. It yeah. wasn't awful. I think, yeah, as I said, when you set the bar so high, it's hard to sort of have an average game and then be rated like averagely yeah, I know, it's, I know it's strange saying. but yeah moving on to Stevie B Stephen Bergwijn <laughs> uh, we gave him a 7 this guy looks like a star a yeah, star in the making 100% I think um, he settled into the team a lot quicker than Lacelso did yeah. I mean obviously he's played well uh, against City and then yesterday he created some really good chances that, that cross into Ali um, and then he, he created some really nice through balls as well I'm, won the I, penalty looking, yeah won the penalty um, did you think that was a penalty? It was a difficult one. Yeah. I think maybe. Yeah. Maybe from where I was sitting, 
I thought, no way is it a penalty. No. I thought he won the ball in here off Bergwijn out for a goal kick. But when I saw it the second time, yeah. he does take the man before he takes the ball. Yeah, exactly. It is a penalty, but I had to see it literally about six times because it's a strange the way he's in the right position to get the ball, but he doesn't actually get it until he kicks it. So it is a penalty, but it's just a strange one for the ref to, to give. And, and either way, I think it was a penalty, mm. to be fair. So. I think it was a bit harsh on Villa to go back to VAR for that because you know you're only supposed to be going back for clear and obvious good and that point. wasn't clear and obvious. Yeah, it's a good point. So I think it is a bit harsh on Villa to go back to VAR for that, but the right decision was made at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, when you look at his performance, you know you can see the, the, the sheer speed this guy has is unbelievable. The strength he has as well to mm -hmm. hold up the ball. Um, I think unbelievable uh, attributes this guy has and I think he's only going to get better and better. 100%. Moving on to Hyun Min Son, we gave him an eight. I, for one, actually thought it wasn't his best, one of his best performances. I felt that he had a lot of chances to score where the keeper was equal to him on a, on a different day. You know, you're talking about Son getting way more than a hat-trick in this game. Uh, he was providing a lot of trouble down that left-hand side. Um, he would get the ball sometimes and he, he was too hesitant. He didn't know whether to cross, yeah, didn't know no, whether to shoot. Fair, that's um, fair and that judgment. was the problem with Son, you know, but... but he gets us out of jail. He gets that goal, uh, that penalty. Obviously, yeah. he misses the penalty with a poor penalty. Yeah. But the reactions to get the to get the ball into the back of the net, 100%. first one to get the ball before anyone, mm -hmm. and then obviously the last goal, uh, relying on a defensive mistake from Engels. But to get the ball and to get the ball all the way to the keeper and to slot it the way he did in the last minute, absolutely sensational. Yeah, definitely. I think as for the first goal, I didn't actually realise until I watched the game back again, he actually gets a really diff difficult touch to get and he sort of slots it the other way to which Rainer was going. And I think the first goal is actually underrated because I didn't even realise how, how good it was to get the touch and get the first goal. Yeah. And then the second one, his reactions were just on point. And uh, the way he switched his body to get to get past Rainer and finesse it in the last minute with all the pressure of the squad on him was fantastic. So, but again, um, we're talking about if Hume Min Son uh, it just improved his decision making a bit in this game. You're talking yeah. about a ten out of it ten. It could be literally. 10 10. It's 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 not on every every decision he has that is really important. I think the last the, obviously the last decision was the best, but there was a lot of times where it could have been much better, and it, it didn't have to go down to the wire like that. Yeah, definitely. And I felt that, um, you know, you're talking about humans on the last five games. He scored in every one of these five games, but we're yeah. saying the same comments about him. You know, it could no, be a lot better, yeah. but he's still scoring goals. So, yeah. Yeah, so you um, can't really mark him down, can you? Because yeah, exactly. he's, he's producing the goods. Um, catch, uh, catch 32, is that what you call it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we move on to Lucas Mora. Finally, we gave him a six. Mm -hmm. I feel that it's the same performance from Lucas Mora week in, week out, you know, that pure energy, high intensity, but little end product. Yeah, I think the first 20 minutes he had, he was a bit unpredictable for the Villa uh, defence, but other than that, when his energy sort of died down and he didn't get as many chances, it, it was the same old, as we say every week. I think he does good work for the team, but we're not seeing that in kind of the stats and goals and assists. 100%, 100%, yeah. Um, so obviously moving on to Jose Mourinho, how do you think that he kind of in implemented the game plan. What did you think of his starting eleven? Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you think it all went yesterday for him? Yeah, as I was saying, uh, I think a lot of the starting eleven was due to the two games we've got coming up, like Dyer and things like that. But I think overall, the t the team for us to be down thirty minutes in and not playing very well against Villa, it wasn't it wasn't great. But that's down to the team, not to Mourinho. I think the way he set up was fairly reasonable, be considering the games we've got coming up. So it's a bit of a I'm not too sure where you can point him right or wrong, but yeah. Uh, well, we did win the game. Um, yeah. A lot of that was to do with maybe his in-game management. Uh, Lo Celso yeah. come on for Dyer on the 60-minute mark. That changed. Um, that the really, game. it really did change the game because he took off a defensive player for a very attacking player. Yeah. Although Lo Celso, I don't think he was that good when he come on. He done a few nice moments, but it yeah. just changed the way we were thinking in the game, didn't it? Yeah, I think it, it boosted the players' confidence, and when Dyer came off as well, I think it just. It sort of it did like you say switch the dynamic and into the last the last twenty minutes we were completely dominant throughout so I guess yeah he, that's down to Mourinho and his tactics so it it, was, it ended well which is what we need he, he grinds results out and 
did that for us yesterday. And obviously Jetson came on uh, with around 10 minutes to go for Deli yeah. Ali. I thought he was really good when he came on, showed mm -hmm. some good attacking intent. Uh, he was winning the ball high up the pitch, getting the ball, crossing the ball in. Uh, what did you think out of Jetson? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with him. He's, the last couple of games coming off the bench, he's looked a lot more attacking. Well, not even, as just more confident in, yeah. in his play, skillful. Yeah. And I'm excited to see him start a few games, hopefully soon, definitely. And then obviously in the last minute uh, after we scored, Jan came on for Bergwijn. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. think he touched a ball, so let's no. not comment about that. But <laughs> look, we move on. We've got Red Bull or RB Leipzig yeah, this yeah, week yeah. in the Champions League. Then we got Chelsea. Yeah. And then after that, we got Wolves. So we've got three massive it's, games it's, coming it's, up. They're all crucial for this season. And um, the most interesting thing, I think, how Marino is going to set out for all, all three because they're in a short time span and they're three massive games as well so it's interesting how he's gonna well especially the next two games how mm. he's gonna set out the squad um yeah I, I hope he doesn't start dire for either of them because they're much bigger than yesterday so you and me both mate you and me both <laughs> but there you have it that's our player ratings for the absolutely epic win at villa park in the last second of the game from human son um <laughs> Thanks, Engels, as well, by the way, yeah. uh, for completing our day. It was a weird one because, you know, you had Toby Alderweireld. He scored no goal, scored a goal, then got beaten on, on the header. Yeah. Then Engels, you know, he scores and then makes a mistake. And then he, he was the one that gave away the penalty as yeah, well. Exactly. So it was, it's, it's a game that neither of them are going to forget <laughs> in, the, in the short term or exactly. the long run. <laughs> exactly. Well, anyway, that's our player ratings. Like, subscribe and comment below and tell me what you think of our player ratings and tell me what your player ratings are. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.